All right, so this video is a follow-up to one of the posts that I did a couple years back. Um, the title is 3360 Actual 365 and Actual 360, How Lenders Calculate Interest on Commercial Real Estate Loans. Um, and I recently received an email um, with this table copied in, which is table one uh, from the article. And the question was, how do you actually calculate the interest or how did you actually get these numbers? And so I thought it would be a good idea to do a video walking you through how to build amortization tables for each of these scenarios for 3360, 365, 365, and 365, 360. So in this video, we'll walk through the three uh, scenarios and how you can actually build these amortization uh, tables. And if you're on our website, um, you can actually download this template and you can follow along with the video. And if you're on YouTube, just click on the description below to get access to the template. All right, so let's start off by building our header here. We're just going to do our months, um, you know, simple chronological order here. So we'll do our months one, one through 120. So we have a 10 year period. And then for years, we're going to do a roundup, go to the month, divide by 12, comma zero. We can copy that down. And then days in the month, before I do that, let's pick a date here. So we'll start with, we'll start with August. So we'll do August 1st. Then we'll do E date. And then let's copy this down. And now what we want to do is we want to capture um, the days of the month. And so let's do equals day. And then we'll, we'll do end of month. So day will give you the day of the month uh, in terms of a number. And so we want to do end of month, the corresponding month below. And then we want to do months in the future, zero. And let's close that. So this will give us uh, how many days are in each month. And you need this uh, for calculating your, you know, anytime there's a 365 number, you need to calculate interest based on the days of the month. And the reason is, is because each period fluctuates with days and you're calculating interest based on the days. And this will be relevant for um, lender B and lender C with the 365-365 and the 365-360. Um, however, for 3365, it's actually not going to be as relevant, but it's good to have in the header. All right, so for our beginning balance, we have our $1 million. And now I have the interest row highlighted in white because this is really where we need to pay attention to. So let's take our beginning balance, multiply it by the 4%. I'm going to hit a 4 here. And then we're going to multiply this by 30 over 360. So in the 30, 360 scenario, a year is considered 360 days and every month is 30 days. So 12 periods fit neatly, you know, within the 360 days. So multiply by 30 divided by 360. All right, now let's actually come down here and let's get our payment. So let's do equals payment and we'll take our annual rate and divide it by 12. And then we'll take our number of periods, 10 and multiply that by 12 to give us months. And then we'll take our present value as a negative, which is our loan amount. Oh, actually, let's make that our, um, yeah, sorry, our loan amount. F4, close parentheses, let's hit enter. All right, so our principal is our payment minus the interest. And then we have our ending balance, which is our beginning balance, minus the principal payment. And so we'll move over to the next column and we'll take our ending balance as our beginning balance. And now all we need to do is copy this over. And then now we can just copy this all the way down to the end. And that's it. You'll see we have $214,942. That equals to $214,942 here. All right, so moving down to um, 365, 365. 
Um, we won't need to build the headers in again. I've just copied that down. Uh, but we'll do virtually the same thing. So we'll equals our loan amount for the beginning balance. And our interest this time is our balance multiplied by our interest rate. And this time we're going to multiply because it's 365 divided by, uh, or it's 365, 365. So you want the actual days of the month because you're counting the 365 days of the year. So 365 is the days divided by 365. Now, one interesting thing to note here is that doing it this way, if you know there happens to be a leap year, you're going to end up with 366 days in your numerator. And so you may hear this called 365, 365. You may hear it called actual 365. But, you know, the most important thing to do is really, you know, look at the details of the loan docs for how exactly um, your interest is paying. You may hear it even be actual, actual. And then in that case, you know, in a leap year, your uh, denominator will have 366 days. So, you know, this is the general idea of how it's working, where you will you will take the months or the days within the period, which is the month. And divide it by 365 but you know it could vary slightly depending on how your lender um, articulates the way um, the interest is being calculated but this is the common methodology and so on a leap year there's one extra day of interest being calculated all right so here we will do our payment so we have our rate divided it by 12 and we have our Amortization period in years divided by, or multiplied by 12. And then we take our loan amount for our present value. Hit enter. And our principal is our payment minus our interest. And then our ending balance. It's our beginning balance minus our principal uh, payment. So we do equal ending balance. And let's just copy this over. And now we can copy this down. And now here's something interesting that we have to note. So you'll notice that our ending balance actually didn't get there. We're not at zero like we are with the 3360 methodology. And so we need to correct this. And now the reason is, is that Excel's payment function actually is limited to the 3360 method now unless there's a function i'm not aware of um, that will capture this um, so there is a way to solve for this and so we're just going to use goal seek and so we know that the payments are roughly around ten thousand one hundred twenty five dollars a month to get our ending balance to zero so i'm actually going to hard code this in ten one two five and i'm going to make this equal payments equal to previous periods payments all the way down And I'm actually going to turn this blue because now I know that this is an input. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use goal seek. So we're going to do goal seek. We're going to set cell. In this case, it's cell DS40. Uh, and we're going to set it to value zero by changing cell. And this is going to be the payment. So this is basically saying, what is the payment we need to pay each month so that the ending balance is zero at the end of the period? Let's click OK. And you see that we weren't that far off. It's $10,126 and 39 cents. So if we go down here now, you'll see that we have a zero balance. And so that gives us our interest of $215,166. Let's check that. And then we have total payments. Of a little bit, so, so it's a little bit more than when we did the 3360 methodology. All right, so let's move down now to actual 360. And we're gonna do the same thing we did for the payments um, that we did for actual 365, um, but we're gonna calculate the interest a bit differently. So let's do our beginning balance, $1 million. And now our interest is going to be our 1 million times our interest rate. And this time we multiply by the day of the year and this time divided by 360. So let's hit enter. And now we will do our 
payment. And actually, let's just put the $10,126. And we know that this is going to change with our goal seek, but we can just keep it in for now. And then our payment um, minus our interest. And then our ending balance. Beginning balance minus our principal payment. Copy this down. Okay. Now let's use goal seek. Let's go to data. What if analysis goal seek? And let's set this cell to zero. Changing cell T fifty six. Okay, so that's it. So you can see our interest is a bit higher than our 365, 365 methodology. Here's our principal payments and here's our total payments. All right, that's it. So I hope this video is helpful. And again, you know, these are the common methodologies, but make sure you pay attention to the loan documents and how they are written in order to make sure that you are accurately calculating your interest payments um, within your actual deals. All right. Thanks for watching.